Hey everybody, Adrian here with the Northwoods Family Channel. Thanks for coming by and checking out our video. We got some questions about our trailer setup from some of our viewers, uh, actually from some new uh, UTV owners, new side-by-side -side owners, so that's awesome seeing more people joining the community. And they were kind of wondering, um, you know, what type of trailer should I get? Uh, you know, how much can I tow with my car or my truck or whatever, things like that. So we thought we'd put together a video um, just kind of going over the basics of, uh, you know, what to look for in a trailer, kind of what some of your options are, and then how to get your side-by-side -side setup on and strapped down, load distributed uh, evenly and correctly and things like that. So hopefully this will help uh, some of you out who are just taking those first steps or maybe be a good refresher for some of you who've been towing things for a while. All right, so there's so many different options with trailers and uh, um, you know enclosed versus not enclosed, dual axle, single axle, aluminum versus steel. Um, it's easy to kind of get in over your head. So really the first thing I would look at is I would look at how much do you need to tow and can your vehicle handle it? Let's just jump on to the manufacturer's website and it will give you some, it should give you some dimensions. Obviously you need to make sure that you get a trailer that's big enough that you can uh, fit your side by side on. And then also it should give you a weight and it should give you at least a dry weight. Now dry weight is going to tell you how much it weighs without anything in it. Our general dry weight is, I wanna say it's about 1,860 pounds. Um, and then I'm going to add at least a couple hundred pounds to that because I figure with all the accessories we've put on, fuel, um, things like that, you know, we're going to be at, you know, 2,000 or maybe 2,200 pounds. Now, there's some places to look on the trailer that are going to give you its capacity. So usually on the tongue, there's a sticker like this one, and that's going to tell you your gross vehicle weight rating. So that is how much um, this trailer um, plus cargo is going to weigh. Now this is important because it's gonna tell me whether or not my vehicle can handle it. It's also gonna give me, weight of the cargo should never exceed 5,520 pounds, okay? I know, again, looking up online that this trailer weight, okay, the trailer itself weighs about 1,400 pounds. Again, that's from the manufacturer's website. The next thing we need to look at is what can my tow vehicle handle, all right? I am hauling this with a 2018 Toyota Tundra with a 5.7 liter V8 engine in it. So uh, this thing has no problems pulling about anything. Again, a couple places you can look up your tow, uh, tow rating and things like that. Manufacturer's website. I did a quick Google search, uh, looked on the manufacturer's website here, and uh, I forgot the exact number, but it's over 10,000 pounds for this half ton Toyota pickup. We have our general, which I'm gonna say is gonna weigh maybe 2,200 pounds. Um, I'll put another five to 600 pounds of cargo potentially in the back with all sorts of camping and, and things like that. Um, and that's probably uh, very generous. I'm sure it's less than that. So we're looking at, um, you know, I'm just under 3,000 pounds maybe, maybe 2,800 pounds for the entire, uh, all the cargo and stuff we'd be carrying on there. 2,800 plus 1,400 pounds for the trailer. So we're well below, well below the 10,000 pounds um, that this, this puppy can carry, this puppy can tow. That's how I would start, figure out the weight of your cargo, the weight of your trailer, and what your vehicle can tow, and then go from there. Okay, so the next debate that often comes up is, should I get an open trailer like this one, or should I get an enclosed trailer? An enclosed trailer that would be able to hold uh, a side-by-side -side the size of our general is, is going to be pretty expensive. You're easily talking eight to twelve thousand dollars. They're very nice, but you know, they're pricey. Uh, the other thing with enclosed trailers is that they're they're heavier. Uh, gas mileage is another issue with the enclosed trailers because of their you know walls and especially depending on their design. Some are flat front, front some have a more aerodynamic front. Your gas mileage is going to suffer a little bit more usually with an enclosed trailer too. Obviously, there are some advantages of an enclosed trailer, uh, primarily being, you know, they keep everything out of the elements. So, uh, you know, you don't need to worry about rain and, and sun and stuff like that. And also, 
you know, it's easier to keep things secure. You can, you know, lock, uh, lock up the back, lock up, you know, a side door if you have it. So, so I decided I didn't want to spend that much money. Um, plus the other issue with our generals, it's a big machine. So we need a really big and close trailer and it's a tall machine too. And, uh, the taller, obviously the enclosed trailer gets the worse gas mileage you get. And it's just, you know, it's a little bit harder to store. This one is real easy to store, um, in my barn and, um, you know, it's just a little bit simpler, even though, yeah, our machine is exposed to the rain and the rocks and dirt and stuff like that when we're on the road. Another thing people look at is um, construction, aluminum or steel. We decided to get an aluminum because I really wanted to um, reduce the weight of it primarily. Um, steel trailers are generally going to be uh, heavier. They're going to be less expensive, which is nice, obviously, um, but they can also rust. So now the aluminum trailer may have uh, parts on it that are steel, like obviously the bolts, the axles, things like that are going to be steel. But the frame is going to be aluminum. And then, as you see here, we have uh, it's a treated wood deck. So we went with the aluminum trailer. Um, and, uh, you know, primarily, yeah, it's a little bit more money, but... It's going to hold up a lot better, not rust. I have another smaller steel trailer that, unfortunately, we have to store outside because we just don't have room for it. And, you know, it, it doesn't take long before they start they start rusting. So, um, if you can, I, I like the aluminum option. You know, for me, I think the longevity, the, the life, the resale value, hopefully that will get out of this trailer, will be worth the investment going with aluminum. All right, so... Uh, Another thing that we have to look at is dual axle or single axle. Now, there are some advantages, pros and cons to each. Again, uh, cost comes into it. Um, but ultimately, you know, it, it kind of depends on how big of a machine are you towing. Um, for us, you know, towing well over 2,000 pounds when we load up all of our gear, uh, the dual axle was, was really just the way to go. I did look at some single axle trailers, but I was leaning toward a dual axle um, all the time for a number of reasons. So single axles are obviously going to be cheaper, uh, the, they're going to be lighter weight, you're going to have less rolling um, resistance on the ground, so you might get a little bit better gas mileage with them, and you're going to be able to turn a little bit tighter with them. That said, um, a dual axle trailer is going to tow so much better than a single axle trailer. I've got several other single axle trailers. Our boat is single axle, and that probably weighs about the same as our side-by-side. -side. Um, and with a single axle trailer, you get a lot more bounce as you're going over uh, cracks or, or bumps in the road. And you get a lot more sway out of the trailer when you're towing, especially when you get up to higher speeds. Um, you'll find that the single axles just don't track as nicely. Your weight distribution is a lot more, um, I don't want to say it's more important, but those single axle trailers are going to be more sensitive to proper weight uh, distribution, whereas with this dual axle here, I've got a little bit of leeway uh, how I want to uh, load up my trailer depending on, you know, what type of gear and stuff I need to put on it. Sometimes I'll, uh, like on our last trip, I'll cheat the um, ATV a little bit further forward so I can get some more gear behind it. Um, and it still tows uh, actually really well. So that said, dual axles are, are going to be more expensive, of course. Um, you might get less gas mileage, maybe, because you have more uh, rolling uh, friction, more resistance as you're towing. All right, so now we're going to talk about weight distribution and strapping down the machine and uh, actually getting it on the road. All right, so first things first, we want to make sure that our load is distributed evenly left to right. All right, we want to make sure that's balanced. So as you can see, that's, that's just about perfect left to right. Front to back is where people tend to have problems and they'll get into trouble, okay? So this is generally, generally, huh? pun intended, where I load our general on this trailer. Basically, I have the weight just in front of the axles a little bit. When in doubt, 
it is better to have a little bit too much weight up front than it is to have too much weight in back. Okay. Um, what we're really aiming for, and I don't have a scale or any way to measure this, but generally they say 15 to 20 percent of the of the cargo weight should be on the tongue. Okay. Um, Honestly, you don't need to get super complicated with it. You don't need to weigh it. Basically, what we want to do is we want to look, is my trailer level? All right, and it looks real nice and level there. And is my truck level? Is my truck level? And it does. What is my, with this Tundra here, I don't have any special tow packages or anything like this. It's a base, you know, it's a standard 1794. Um, the gap there in that tire, rear tire, gap here in the front tire. All right, does it does it look level? This looks really nice and level. The drop of your hitch is actually pretty important. I see people all the time who are towing with hitches that are too high or too low. You want the trailer to sit level, and a lot of times I'll see uh, see with pop up campers all the time, and the the camper is at like a ten degree you know, lean backwards or, or forwards because they have it, they have the, uh, the drop wrong. That's really easy. All you need to do is just get a different hitch adapter. They also make some that are like, you know, adjustable so you can move them up or down, but make sure that before you put anything on it, that your trailer is level. Okay. Now we've moved our machine forward as far forward as we can go. Um, so this is what this has done is it has increased the hitch weight um, by a, by a fair amount. You can actually see now that it's sagging a little bit in the front. You can see that the trailer is leaning a little bit forward. It's not super level or it's not as level. It's not not bad. And I don't know if you can tell or not. It looks like I've got a little bit more sag in the back of my pickup. It's not a lot, okay? And part of the reason why it's not a lot is because of the dual axle. Excessive tongue weight, what that does is that pushes down on the rear of the truck and it causes the front wheels to lose traction, okay? So it might be a little bit harder for me to steer there as well. All right, now we've moved it too far back. So let's say you're thinking, oh man, I've got some gear I wanna carry. I'm gonna put that on the front of the trailer and then I'm gonna load you know, my UTV in the back. Uh, this is a terrible idea. This is super dangerous. Um, having too much weight on the tongue isn't, isn't good. Can also be dangerous, depending on the loads and the vehicle and things like that. Um, but it's, it's better to have a little bit too much on the tongue than to have too much on the back. This is super dangerous. And this at some point, um, you know, if you have to swerve or you get a gust of wind or things like that, the, the faster you go even, your trailer just might start swaying. And once it starts swaying with the weight all the way in the back, it just starts whipping the trailer around. And uh, it, this is when you see, you know, trailer crashes, this is often the reason why, because people have loaded way too much weight on the back. Now, obviously, I've exaggerated this a little bit. With that spare tire, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't even be able to close my ramp. But... Um, in order to show you guys the lean of the trailer, I don't know how well you can see it on camera, this is a wide angle lens, but the trailer is definitely leaning back when I look at it, okay? And I can actually see, looking at my pickup here, all right, I can see that the rear of my pickup is getting pulled up by the trailer. And that gap on the rear tire is much wider than the gap on that front tire, okay? So what this is doing now is it's making the rear end of my pickup really loose and um, losing traction. So when that trailer starts whipping around, I'm just going to uh, spin my pickup truck out. Okay, the tail is going to wag the dog. Now I said you don't need a fancy scale or anything like that to figure out, you know, if this is going to work or not. So how do you figure that out? Well, basically you need to test it and you need to see how it tows, right? So what I would do is I'd strap this down. Um, and then I would, I'd start driving and I would take it easy at first and I'd slowly, you know, build up speed. Um, and I'm going to see how, how it handles. And if it feels like the trailer is swaying back and forth, okay, well then I need to, need to pull over. Don't ignore that trailer sway. Okay. If it starts wagging, you know, the tail starts wagging the dog, 
Uh, don't ignore that. Pull over and fix it. Okay, move it back, move it forward. Usually, you'll probably have to move it forward, but um, you know you may have to move it back depending on on how you have it loaded up. So, um, and then just just compare. I've towed this machine now a bunch of times with it loaded here, with it loaded back a little bit further, and with it loaded all you know toward the front uh, further. And you know, take note of how it handles uh, each time you load it up. So now, of course, we have to strap it down. Now there's like different techniques, different places you can attach your, your tie down straps. People have different ways of doing it, but I'm just gonna give you guys a few principles to follow. So um, depending on your machine, not everyone's machine has the same you know, strap down points or, or things like that. So um, I would say principle number one is make sure that you have good straps. Uh, these are from Rhino. I'm trying to think who else. Jayco makes some really nice ones. Um, you know, you can even get good quality straps at Menards or Walmart or things like that, but just make sure that they're they're heavy duty, okay? Um, so these, the rating on them, all right, maximum working load limit, 1,700 pounds, maximum brake strength, 5,000 pounds. Um, you know, spending a little bit more money on them isn't a bad idea. They last a little bit longer. Uh, the mechanisms just seem to be smoother and nicer. Uh, these have these uh, um, spring clips, which is kind of nice. So even if my strap loosens up as we're going down the road and I don't notice it or I can't tighten it up right away, um, the hook isn't going to slip off. Okay, it's going to it's going to stay on. So I'll still have still have the machine attached. So principle number one is get good straps and use enough of them and make sure they're uh, strong enough for your machine. Principle number two is you want to keep the machine from sliding forward and sliding backwards. So you're gonna want some straps attached in a manner where they're pulling the machine forward and some where they're pulling the machine backwards. Now people can get all hung up on whether they wanna pull the machine kinda of downwards too, if they want to uh, compress the shocks or not. I, I don't think it makes a difference. I don't think it's not going to wear your shocks out by compressing them on the trailer some degree. Um, I really haven't found a difference towing. I've done in both ways. I haven't been able to notice a difference towing. Um, you know, the machine sitting here like this, as we hit bumps, the suspension in the machine is going to take, take some of those bumps. So I, I think that's fine. I would rather have the suspension absorb that than um, the whole unit bounce up and down and transfer that energy, you know, from the trailer to the machine, back to the trailer, things like that. So I prefer not to compress my suspension. Um, that's just how I've done it, and it seems to work well for me. Tightening down ratchet straps is you have to make sure they're tight, all right? If there's slack in them, that machine's going to get some momentum. It's going to start sliding forward, and then... Um, you know, it's going to be like pulling a, a slack rope taut, right? You can you can break it a lot easier if there's if that machine gets momentum. There's going to be a lot more force put into that strap. You're going to notice, um, likely after you drive for a little bit, that they're going to loosen up periodically. Check them. You know, when you stop for gas, check them. You want to attach obviously to something solid on your trailer and something solid on your machine. Something like the frame, okay, something like your push bar. Like you, you really don't want to attach to, you know, suspension pieces. Obviously don't attach to plastic because that's just going to rip, that's going to break. On this general, it's actually pretty tricky to find good attachment points. Rock sliders, okay, this is what I use now because these are bolted to the frame. They're heavy duty and they're really easy for me to, um, to get to. One of the tricks that I do is Rhino... These Rhino strap kits came with these soft loops. These are generally used with motorcycles to um, use on like handlebars and stuff like that where you can't just hook your clips into them. So what I'll do is I'll find a piece on the frame here, I'll show you in a minute, and I'll feed that through itself. And then you can hook your clip onto that as that goes around whatever you know, frame piece you're gonna use. Now I've only got one on. If I just start cranking this down all the way, I'm just gonna start dragging my machine forward, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a crank or two just to hold it in place, all right? I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Pull up the slack. Again, it's laying pretty flat. Just gonna give it a 
couple clicks to hold in place. Now we gotta go to the back. All right, so we got a couple options here, right? Easy thing for me to do would probably be this D-loop and then just clip it to, you know, my trailer hitch there. Um, I don't like that much of an angle personally. You know, if that's the only option I have, that's fine. But I've just been looping it around this and, uh, and going to, again, the back of that rock slider there. So I think both are totally acceptable options. All right, so now I can start putting a little bit more oomph into them. Okay, after I have all four of my attachment points down, all right, I can start tightening them down a little bit. So again, you can kind of see I've got, yeah, this isn't bad, that's not really rubbing. What I don't want to have is I don't want to have like my tire bulging out and putting a big angle in the strap. So I think what I am going to do is, though, is I'm, going to, I'm going to mount a couple more of these D-rings in a few places, just to give me a little bit easier time strapping things down. So now, I'm going to start cranking and I'm going to start taking the slack out of them one at a time. All right, and it doesn't really matter if you start with the front or the back. And I'm going to want them pretty, pretty tight, almost as tight as I can get them, really. And then, uh, like I said, they're going to probably loosen a little bit as you drive. So you're going to want to make sure you stop to uh, tighten them up. All right, once I tighten them all down once, I'm going to go back and check them. Okay, I don't need to put all of my force into it, but I want them pretty tight. So, we've got straps pulling the machine forward, keeping it from sliding backwards. We've got straps pulling the machine backwards, keeping it from sliding forward. They're tight. Last thing we have to do is just wrap up those tails because we don't want those wagging around, getting caught. Plus, it's just annoying and looks like crap. So, a couple ways you can just kind of loop them on each other and, and tie them up. But again, something nice about some of these nicer straps, they just come with these Velcro pieces. And then just use this Velcro to crank them down. Make sure you do it nice and, you know, tight. So again, so it doesn't loosen up or work its way free in the wind. and. And boom, there you go. Okay, well we've got our side-by-side -side strapped down nice. Okay, we've got straps pulling it forward on each side, straps pulling it backwards on each side, so it's not gonna slide forward and back. Okay. We have our straps locked down nice and tight and our tail secured. We have the weight distributed properly front to back and side to side, all right. So the next thing that I look at then is making sure other things in my machine are good to go, okay? I'm gonna wanna obviously try to increase my gas mileage a little bit. So I'm gonna do things like, I'm gonna fold in my mirrors. I actually even take off my windshield. I have this Polaris Lock and Ride windshield. It's a lot of wind resistance right there. And what I've noticed, especially on our long trips, if I'm just driving, you know, a short ways is not a big deal, but it literally takes me two minutes to pop off this windshield. So. What I've noticed is the wind hits this and then it really starts flexing this roof. Okay, so again, I mean, probably don't have to, I'm sure it's fine, but it's something that uh, I like doing and I've noticed I do get better gas mileage. Um, also, this is a glass windshield and I really don't want a rock getting kicked up from my truck or from another vehicle coming and smashing this windshield because it's expensive. So what I'll actually do is I'll take this windshield off, I'll wrap it in a moving blanket, and then I just slide it in from the back, and I just lay it flat underneath the, uh, the UTV. Throw one strap across it just to keep it from sliding forward if I slam on the brakes. What I'll do is I'll make sure that I don't have any loose wires or things like that. Uh, it's really annoying when you're driving down the highway and you see this wire just, you know, whipping around in circles. Um, and that includes things, you know, even little wires and stuff like that in here. You know, I, I secure uh, any of these that uh, I, I disconnect. Um, my windshield washer hose, you know, I just tuck it in. 
uh, any audio cables we have. Just make sure everything is tucked in and that there's nothing loose in here that's going to blow out papers. Obviously, I'd secure all this stuff. Okay, and you can load gear in here. Um, you know, I've loaded camping equipment in here, which is real nice, but just make sure everything is secure. Nothing's going to blow out. Uh, obviously, nothing that you don't want to get wet um, would be in here either. I'm kind of going out of order here. Normally, this is something I do first, and I make sure before I load anything on there that this is all hooked up correctly and good to go because I don't want to get distracted and then drive off and not have my trailer secured. So I normally do this first, but just for the sake of this video, it is a little bit easier to go out of order. So, okay. So obviously, all right, we've hitched up the, the ball. We make sure that that ball is is seated. Just make sure it's seated all the way on there. Definitely want to throw a hitch pin um, or a lock or something like that on there. So um, that doesn't bounce up as you're riding. Don't let your safety chains drag on the ground. It's annoying, they spark. You look like a clown. Um, if they're a little bit long, probably the easiest thing to do is just twist them up and you can see these have actually drug a little bit on the ground even. So, um, you know, make sure these are maybe even a little bit, uh, a little bit um, too long there. I might even twist them up a little bit more if I was gonna go for a, a long, long drive here, okay? So safety chains are just there, obviously, in case your hitch or ball fails. Here's your plug. All right, so we've got a, what is this, a, f a flat seven or a round seven, I mean. All right, so I'm gonna plug that in. Just make sure none of your cables or things like that are binding, because obviously when you turn, there's a little um, latch there in the cap, so that'll keep that in. Just make sure that's all the way in. You know, perform some maintenance if there's corrosion, clean it off, things like that. Okay, trailer brakes. And this is where I see most people make a lot of mistakes, all right? This is the cable for your emergency trailer brakes. This is designed where if my trailer comes off the hitch, all right, this cable, which is attached to my truck, will pull this mechanism and that will engage my trailer brakes, all right? In order for that to work, this cable has to be shorter then the length of your chains are extended were this to come off the vehicle. So what I see a lot of people doing, okay, is I see a lot of people who will attach, they'll attach this cable to the chain, all right? Um, unless your cable is, is just right, that isn't probably gonna work. The other thing I see people do is loop it through the chains and then clip it on there too, again, at least the way this one came from the factory, this cable was significantly longer than the length of those chains at full extension, all right? Don't accept that the way they had it at the factory was correct. I think a lot of times they just weave it through the chains just so it doesn't drag as they're, as they're moving it around, okay? So what you need to do is you need to make sure, again, if your trailer comes off the hitch and these chains are pulled taut, that this gets pulled taut before the chains. This is just to engage your emergency trailer brake. So this is what I did. Mine was way too long, okay? I put a little clip on it. I loop mine through like that, and then I just tied a little knot, okay? If you can see that, a little knot. All I do then is I just pull that through and I just clip it, and it just hangs there, and that's fine. That's what it's supposed to do. Now you wanna make sure that it's loose enough where if I'm making a really sharp right turn, like it doesn't pull so tight that it's gonna engage my trailer brake. And this is fine, okay? Make sure it's not gonna bind up on anything again where it could accidentally engage my trailer brake. But you can clearly see now just by the length of slack, all right? If my trailer were to come off the hitch, this is going to engage a trailer brake before those chains are pulled taut. If the chains are shorter than the length of cable, your trailer brake's not gonna engage if your trailer comes off the hitch. I see 95% of the trailers that I see people towing are doing this incorrectly. They're, they're setting up their cable so their emergency trailer brakes won't work if it comes off the hitch. I was doing it wrong for a really long time. I was like, this doesn't make sense. I saw everybody else doing it, and finally I started thinking about it. And same thing, I, I did a little internet research, I actually read a manual, and uh, I was like, oh, yeah, 
It's not supposed to uh, <laughs> not supposed to just wind it up in your chain. If you just loop it through there and you have all this slack, you get too much slack in that cable, when those chains pull tight, it's not going to do anything. All right, now we're going to talk about testing our trailer brakes. Before I jump in the tow vehicle and take off, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to do one final walkthrough. I have a mental checklist. Honestly, if you're new to this, it wouldn't hurt just to maybe jot some things down on paper because it's pretty easy. You get distracted. You know how it is. You're loading up. You're, you're in a hurry. You're trying to get out of, you know, out of the driveway for the weekend of camping or, you know, off-roading or whatever, and you forget stuff. So actually writing out a checklist may not be a bad idea. So basically, I start at the top and I work my way down, okay? So I'm going to check my machine first. I'm going to make sure that everything on the machine is taken care of. Again, I don't have any loose items. My mirrors are folded in. Normally my windshield would be off if I was going to tow it for any length of time. Okay. And I kind of do a walk around to the vehicle, looking at my side by side first, making sure everything is secure. Everything is closed, right? I don't want my gate open, things like that. Then I move further down. And the next thing I look at is how are my straps? Are my straps all tight? I'm going to check all four of my straps, make sure that I didn't forget one. They're tight. They're all locked down. The tails are taken care of. All right, we're good to go. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna step back here. And I'm gonna check my lights, okay? I'm just checking them with my remote, all right? This not only tells me if my lights should be working, but if they're not, I'm more concerned about my trailer brakes not working. So especially carrying a heavier load like this, trailer brakes are really important. Last thing I'm gonna double check, so I'm gonna make sure, okay, my hitch is on good. That's locked, that's secured. I've got my chains attached. I've got my trailer brake attached properly to my truck. All right, I've got that plugged in. I just checked the lights. I know that's good to go. All right, my truck is good to go. Now it's time to hop in and we're gonna show you how to adjust the brake bias. So we got the vehicle fired up. I can see that my little tow thing is on there. That's good to go. I'm not getting any warnings. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the brake bias. So if your vehicle has something like this, these are our trailer brakes, okay? And you see there's this squeezy thing, and then there's this thing called gain, okay? So, you can see that's what my trailer brake looks like right now. The gain is set to zero. Brake gain is really how much, uh, how much brake uh, added brake assistance am I going to get from the trailer, okay? So if you have it set too low, your trailer brakes aren't gonna be as effective. And um, what can happen is if you have to slam on the brakes or brake suddenly, your trailer can start whipping around and overtaking your vehicle, which is bad, all right? Uh, on the contrary, we definitely don't want the brakes to lock up either. So we wanna find a nice balance. So basically this is how we're gonna do this. We're gonna find a nice flat level surface and I'm gonna do this on the, the concrete. I'm on gravel right now. All right, so I'm gonna get my spill speed built up to about 15 or 20 miles per hour, all right? And then when I'm on a flat surface, I really don't wanna be going uphill or downhill. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to squeeze my brakes. So let the people in the car know you're gonna do this, especially your wife, it makes her uh, not get as angry at you. All right, I'm squeezing it now and nothing is happening. I'm not even slowing down. Okay, my brakes certainly aren't locking up. So what I need to do is I need to bump up my gain. And what you can do, um, I'm pretty familiar with this vehicle, so I'm gonna bump it up a bunch. But if you're unfamiliar, you know, bump it up one or two points at a time. Right, we're gonna try it again at six. Okay, definitely slowing us down. It's taking a while, but we're coming to a complete stop. All right, so that's actually pretty good. That was pretty good. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit more and see what happens. So now we're up to eight. All right, still pretty good. Breaking, uh, coming to a stop a little bit sooner. I like it. Eight. Let's bump it up to nine. Still here. All right, still not locking up. That's good. All right, we're gonna go to ten. 
10 is as high as my truck will go. Ooh, almost locked up there. Locked up for a second and then kind of let go. We have this, this general is heavy enough where it's going to be hard to get this thing to lock up. All right, I just heard it screech for a little bit and then they gave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it off just a little bit. I'm going to back it off like to a 9.5 or a 9.0. Yep, that's pretty good. So that stops my truck. They're not locking up and uh, and we're set to go. So now, as I'm driving, all right, as I apply my truck brakes. Then will just slow down? Yep, it'll slow down. It'll also engage the vehicles, the, uh, the trailer brakes, I should say. So, when are you going to want to check that? I check that every time I tow, every time I change something. I'm not going to check it, you know, after I stop for gas, but if I change the load, if I add stuff or take it away, um, I'm going to check it. So, on our truck, excuse me, with my truck and this trailer, um, obviously, if I take all of that weight off of the trailer, I need to set my brake gain a lot lower. So, if I just unload the general and I just have an empty trailer um, and I do that test uh, at the nine or nine and a half that I'm set at gain right now it's absolutely going to lock up the the wheels which I don't want so when I'm changing the weight of the load or the distribution of the load I need to check it again so all right so now we're up to highway speeds we're doing about 75 miles an hour Okay. And that dual axle trailer is tracking really nicely. It's a little bit windy today actually, but even at this speed it's uh, pretty comfortable to drive. Alright, I can give the trailer a little bit of a wiggle there. Just moving the steering wheel and see how fast it straightens out. Yeah, before I can even get the camera over. All right, that is what proper weight distribution will do. All right, so I've got the weight again forward of center, front of my axles. All right, if my weight was really far back, uh, that trailer is going to keep wobbling. It's going to take a lot longer for it to correct, or it could even go out of control. So now think if I have to, you know, avoid something in the road or avoid an accident by swerving or moving into a different lane quick lane change. Um, could be a gust of wind, a, a truck driving by real close, turbulence coming off a truck in front of me. So that's what proper weight distribution is really going to uh, really gonna make a difference. And then also having that, that dual axle. The dual axle really helps make this tra trailer drive nicely. Um, like I said, I'd I'd lean more toward the dual axle trailers if you're going back and forth and you're like, I don't know if I want to spend the extra, you know, 500 bucks or whatever it is for a second axle. Man, if you're going to be doing longer trips, uh, I highly recommend it. I'm so glad we got this dual axle trailer. Uh, it's just a pleasure to tow. All right, well, thanks for joining me today. Um, hopefully that answers a bunch of questions that uh, some of you uh, newer folks had when it comes to you know hauling your side-by-side, -side, uh, whether it's just down the road or across the country. If you have any questions about our trailer or our setup or, or anything that you're trying to do, uh, anything at all, make sure you drop them in the comments below and, um, and you know we're happy to jump down there and answer them for you and hopefully give you some guidance. So um, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. We have a really cool trip coming up. In fact, when this video is released, I think we're gonna be finishing up our trip. Uh, we're going out to the Black Hills for a whole week. Uh, we're going to spend about five days. Uh, our plan is to overland camp. So we're going to dump the trailer, dump the truck, 
pull the general off and for five days camp out of the general. Uh, different parts uh, around the Black Hills, we want to ride a bunch of trails in the northern, central, and southern hills. So should be uh, a bunch of really cool videos coming out of that that are going to give you a real good overview of uh, trail riding in the Black Hills and, uh, and also camping and overlanding out of uh, one of these larger side-by-sides. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We appreciate your support and uh, we'll see you next time.